today's training. And we also have the A2 things that's basically to train and also to test the A swimming and also the landing capabilities. So basically to introduce what exactly for these two parts. So we talk about swimming, that's for sure. We're testing that the A vehicles from the AC to the land. And of course, we will also see that how the vehicles can react with the tide. And also, we need to see how we can do different formations with different fighting vehicles. And from the sea to the land, that's also the part of the testing. So basically, today we have the eight different subjects. And right now we can see our soldiers are well ready in place. So this is the a fighting vehicles for, for myself. I can tell you I didn't see any differences, but I heard that this is actually two different type of the vehicles. One is the assault fighting vehicles. Another is the a assault gun. So you can see with the different size of the guns, so that's basically can tell the different two kinds of the fighting vehicles. So you can see if it's the A type 05 amphibious assault gun and also the amphibious IFV. So these are the two cutting edge fighting vehicles right now in China in service and with outstanding killing, swimming, firing capabilities. And that's also with the A skateboard, the A materials. So it's good to fight in the combat in the amphibious minor. So we talk about the A caliber of the A gun that can tell the shooting range. So we talk about that actually one is armed with a 30 millimeter min gun, another one, the a assault gun actually with the A50 millimeter, and also the assault gun is also high bear. And we look at the amphibious assault gun actually equipped with five people, one driver, one the a people do the a commander, and another two people actually the a marksman. And for the amphibious uh, FV or the amphibious the vehicles actually equipped with more than 10 people because on the board we have 11 people actually for the actual fight and we also have drivers and the a one person in charge of the communication and so we talk about that amphibious I we actually two times heavier than the amphibious assault gun. So why is heavier? And because of the fire, the a fires. The firing turret or the firing gun actually is heavier. So these two types of vehicles, when we talk about the speed, it's uh, 65 kilometers per hour, and um, by the sea, it's around 12, 20 kilometers per hour. So it's very fast. So this one is the uh, infantry fighting vehicles. So this is by height, it's around 3 meters. Yes. So we look at this infantry fighting vehicle. It's around 10 meter long it's in sea. And if uh, on the sea we have the a sliding plate folded, unfolded, that's around the 13 meters long. So for our soldiers, let's say it's the a 180 centimeters. So we talk about if in the real battle situation that should be in position in a very, very fast manner. So we look at the our soldiers right now already in position. And on the left hand side, we can see we all have these holders that help our soldiers to get into the place immediately. So we also have the holders at the both sides and also at the front and at the back of the vehicles. 
So can we look at exactly when they hear the order and in the position, can we look at the whole process? So especially for the marksman and drivers. So let's take a look. One is driver, one is markman. Order, in position. On board. All right, this is basically the whole process. So it is divided into the three steps. All right, you can see they actually in position and also change their hats after they in position on board. So this is a must to do, right? Yes, this is working cap, so basically for the communication purpose. So talking about communication, so what kind of equipment actually on board with the vehicle? It's quite cutting edge, equipped with Beidou navigation system. So it's quite a complicated system. So I also provide advanced information. So let's say during the whole training session regarding all the communication, so any information, no matter in data or in pictures or in sound, that all can be transferred to the command center. So look at this one. This vehicle actually can accommodate to 11 soldiers. So before they get down to the a road training session, let's get a closer look at the a inner part of the vehicle. So right now you can see nine people maximum on board. You can see they equipped high to toe. So for the a, this is the standard the a uniform, right? Yes. So this is based on their the a formation. So look at they have the a assault rifle, they have the a carbon, they have it the a squad weapon, machine gun. So this is all based on the standard requirement. So can we talk about right now? We will very soon to kick off our today's training. Yes. So because of the safety issues, we need to keep a distance away from the a infantry fighting vehicle. So right now we can see the training is kicked off. So this is the western part of China's Guangdong province. And the engine already started. So this is a brigade of Chinese Marines conducts literal combat training, and they do this every summer. And let's see for sure when they go into the sea, they also have that formation. So you will tell that's very different from the a landing formation and to the a water formation. And also you can see we have the equipment that will be unfolded to help the vehicles get into the sea. So we also have the another two propellers, so that will be provide the a forward power for the vehicles. So right now we can see two IFW right now get ready to be in the sea, and we will see actually this the a vehicle is around 30 tons, so quite heavier. So we talk about when that driving this kind of IFW. 
what our things should be considered. So you can see it's more or less the a logic is the same as the a normal passenger vehicle. So it's because it's very heavy, so you cannot really compare the a passenger car in terms of the a fragile driving experience. And of course, that rely on the teamwork because we talk about on board, we have one driver, we have one person in charge of communication, and we also have the fireman. They should work seamlessly in order to hit the target accurately. So we talk about the drivers for these kind of infantry fighting vehicles. Of course, we have a question coming up, is how we can become a driver for these kind of giant vehicles. So these amphibious vehicles, I can tell you, it was very high requirement. Of course, they should go through all different kinds of trainings and also have different license. And we have license A, B, C. And for us, we also have different standards. We have a level one, level two, level three, and assistant drivers. So based on the different level of drivers that's actually matched to the different period of training. So if as long as the higher of the standards you are, the longer training period you need to go through. So level A and also the super level is the highest one, and then go to level B, level C. So let's say who will be the potential talent or the potential candidate for the drivers. So we talk about the young generations with the driver license, and you have the a basic knowledge of driving, so that will can be a foundation of knowledge that can be the potential candidate. And we also will choose some drivers from the a different service and be the candidate for the drivers of the IFB. And we also can see that right now in different formations. So we talk about the formations also in plan, right? So that's basically based on our requirement. We have that arranged formation. So either it's in one line or in the other vertical or horizontal arrangement. So based on my knowledge, they will also change that formation, right? So what's the meaning of that formation in the real battle period or in the battle time? So talking about the training, so we talk about the purpose we want to test the swimming, tidling capabilities of the vehicle, of course, of the soldiers. So you will see. So we look at the organized into different formation, so that also based on the real world field requirement, and also also task the a drivers because they also need to keep a certain distance between different vehicles. So for the former and the latter vehicles, and the vehicles on the left hand side and the right hand side, they should keep in. 100, 200 meters of safety distance. So when they arrived at the designated position, so we talk about the vehicles will not really have water inside. And also we talk about this is amphibious fighting vehicles, right? How this vehicle floating. So we talk about actually this the imperial impermeability, or we talk about the whole design of this vehicles actually is for this purpose, because that's the purpose of this vehicle is that it can go to do the a battle mission by land and also by sea. So we talk about impermeability of these vehicles are perfect. And also we talk about the design index also should 
fulfill uh, the a function or the a desired function of the vehicles. We talk about like today. We talk about today's weather actually not really helping helping because right now it's really big windy and the uh, raining season and it's raining quite heavily today. So we also would like to choose this extreme weather condition day for training. That's also a good test for the soldiers as well as our vehicles. Right now, we can see all the IFWs already in the sea. And we also have the uh, vehicles that's for the breakdown. So that's once we have that emergency situation happen, that recovery vehicle will be in service to help to modify it or to help to recover any troubles. So our another correspondent right now does ride on that vehicle. So this is a repairment vehicle. And I will also show you the a very front line view to our viewers because right now we are on deck of that repairment vehicle. So this is the a repairment we talk about recovery fighting. So it's not really in the formation for battling purpose. And we will also very soon be in the sea. So the company commander right now already gave the order. So we talk about today the weather actually is not helping, it's quite worse because we have a really strong wind and it's also raining right now. And of course, enemies don't care your weather is good or not, so we will for sure to perform any missions in any weather condition. So right now you can see we are right now get ready to be in the sea. And right now you can see our formation is right now is changing and also we talk about this because this is the amphibi amphibious vehicle so it's from the land mode right now we change or swift to the sea mode so we will for sure first will unfold it that sliding plate. We believe we are ready. So we talk about the first potential risks right now, this moment. Because we can see the tide is really strong and we actually proceed in a very slow mode and very slow speed. So we can see the sliding plate actually is already unfolded. So you can see the tide is really strong and really high, and you can see we have quite big up and down.
好的，黄院长，那现在呢？因为这个信号的问题，因为今天的天气不太好哈、啊。那 All right, we can see that. It's a really big wave. And we can tell actually just now our viewers see that huge waves, and you can tell that's the difficult part for the trainings. And also in today's this quite extreme. The weather conditions, so that also imposes a lot of uncertainties and difficulties to the vehicles as well as our soldiers. So right now we are doing the swimming testing, and of course we have different formations. So we either have the A2 formations in two different lines, or the O vehicles will be in one formation. Of course, everything with a purpose. So right now you can see our formations is going to the deeper sea, and also they are changing the formation while moving forward. So that's also part of today's training. So actually, this is more difficult to the very first fighting vehicles or the a leading vehicles. So we can see that the vehicles right now actually is lining in the a vertical line. So what's really the main purpose, especially in the a battle, real battlefield? So we talk about if the air power is not strong from the enemy side, then these kind of the lining and the vertical line formation actually is good for us to first observe the enemy, and also for us to fare back. So that's of course tactic. Based on the different situation of the battlefield, and we talk about right now, you can see this is a vertical line, and we also have the a horizontal formation or the triangle formation. So we also have different purpose that also based on the enemy's the situation, and we also that can adjust in a very ideal like manner. So talk about this kind of the a, a training on the sea is normally take around thirty minutes. Of course, that would depend on different training, different training subjects. Some subjects need like one hour. If the a simple subject, then then we will take shorter training time. So we can see right now they change to another formation. Maybe right now you can see they go to the left and right hand side, and we can see they will also later on line in the horizontal formation. So we talk about the vehicles. Of course, they not really fight by themselves. This should be a teamwork. So you look at the vehicles. They have the numbers against it. So they have the arranged team. So they have the a person. 
in charge of the older formation, so you can see the formation will not really in a disordered manner, or there's no one to give the command orders. So basically, you look at no matter what is the situation on the sea, it's the whole teamwork. So that should be the top priority. That's the top standard. We have one the a order issue person or vehicle. So Mr. Huang is the head of the a battalion, and because of he need to give us more the information, he is not involved today in the training. But normally he also will be in one of the vehicles over the sea. So we talk about this is the a Marine Corps. Of course, Marine Corps as a major naval force has the a different positions and also have a different DA posts. We talk about later on the board. We have the a marksman. We have drivers. We have person in charge of communication. So this is basically the person involved in this infantry fighting vehicle and for the a personnel or the soldiers in other service. They also have other requirements. They may not really need to be very strong in the swimming or the a firing capabilities. So for the Marine Corps as a major naval forces, is mainly responsible for amphibious landing missions. So how far away, or the how far the all these infantry vehicles? Right now they are the uh, 1,600 meters away from the coastal line. So right now you can say they are right now to the another mission. That's the insult, the or the assaulting landing mission. So you can say right now they're facing the coastal line and they will do that assault mission. So that's part of the landing mission. And we also have another fairing, that's a smoke bomb fairing mission today. So let's first of all go to another correspondent from our command center. All right, right now we are here at the command center. So here is the command center around 80 square meters, and it's around three meters high. And of course, this is the brain of the whole training base. And also in the battlefield, this of course should be the top priority places, because this is the place to give the orders. And we also can see our commanders also give the orders to all the vehicles for today's training. And we also talk about this is the a coastal command center and how that will link with the whole training base. And you can see this the a green tent. 
So that's tanned around 30 square meters. So that's good for the a uh, training, for the marching, and also for their daily needs. And look at our badge. And this is the a special badge. And the, why we have this badge? Of course, you can see that have the a military features as well as the a camouflage features. So we talk about why we have this because today marks the 93rd anniversary of the foundation of the People's Liberation Army. So that is also a very big day to celebrate the anniversary. Oh, right, right now we heard that all the infantry fighting vehicles are ready to perform the next mission. So we talk about that today, this is the a bridge. Brigade of the uh, Chinese Marines conducts literal combat training every the uh, trainings and this training conducts every summer. And we can see we have the uh, amphibious assault gun, amphibious IFV all involved. And we will very soon hear the order from the command center. And this is the staff officer. Right now, is already gave the assaulting order. So very soon we will see they will conduct that assault landing mission. So you can see right now they also changed to another formation. Of course, they cannot really block each other in terms of the visibility. And you can see 14 in total, 10 in the front line and four in the a second line. And we also heard that we also will fire the a smoke bomb. That's also part of today's training mission. All right, you can see that is the a smoke bomb. So that's the a fired smoke bomb. So that's 10 amphibious IFW actually shot that bomb. The purpose actually is to cover the whole visibility from the enemy side. So that's basically provide the a clear path for the four vehicles at the back to forge ahead. So in total, 14 vehicles right now in the sea. So just now we can see the a smoke bomb just fired by the 10 assault vehicles on the front line. And then you can see in this short moment that four vehicles right now coming up to the front line and they change to another formation. So you can see they already changed that formation. So that's just in a very short time period. The UCA smoke bombs to cover this formation change. And you can see right now four IF right now on the front row heading to the land. 
们现在进行到一个什么样的阶段了呢？通过我们的画面看到啊，主观镜头依然是给大家展示着劈波斩浪的壮观景象。我们现在呢，据记者了解，海的壮已经接接近海上上岸区了。So you can see right now the vehicles is braving the wind and the waves and for, forging ahead to the land. Very soon they will conducting the assault landing mission. So we can see just now the 10 vehicles fire the a smoke bombs and that the a four vehicles at the back cross over and get into position. So to use that smoke as a perfect coverage, then they change the formation. And right now we can see they are right now heading to another mission. So right now in total, we have 14 vehicles over the sea. And they also into different arranged mission team. So they have the A team to perform the assaulting mission. Some the other team was doing the A covering mission. So we talk about the Marine Corps as a major naval force is mainly responsible for amphibious landing mission. With the support of ships, artillery, and aviation firepower, they open up the a landing field for the follow-up troops on land to create favorable conditions for the mission. So we can see right now the a vehicles are in full speed heading to the land because they very soon will conduct that assault landing mission. They already changed the formation and changed again. And we talk about today, actually, the weather is not really helping. And we have really strong wind and raining. It's continuing raining. So we talk about under this kind of extreme weather, it's also good to test the kidding, fairing, swimming capabilities of the vehicles. And we can see the IFV, the infantry fighting vehicles, right now landed. So we can see that the amphibious vehicles right now is powered by the caterpillar band. We talk about in total 14 infantry fighting vehicles and they also have the different missions arranged so one team is for the assaulting mission another team for covering this assaulting team so we talk about once the a vehicles arrived online or landed and the a soldiers on board will conduct their shooting or the a battle mission so we talk about Right now, we can see our soldiers already online in a very fast manner. So they equipped high to tall, and you can see they also in different formation or in different team to conduct firing work. So we talk about nine soldiers in one squad. And right now, they're conducting their assaulting mission. So nine soldiers. So from the a one squad, of course, they also finding their covers and also to conduct the firing mission.
So we talk about with the support of ships, artillery, and aviation fair power, they open up the landing field for the follow-up troops online to create favorable conditions for the mission. And we can see once the infantry fighting vehicles landed, the soldiers on board will very soon conduct their fair mission. So the A9 soldiers in the same squad conduct their faring tasks. So that's also part of the assaulting mission. So we talk about the nine infantry from the same squad is getting off the vehicles and then conduct their mission. So this is in the western part of China's Guangdong waters. And we also invite the chief of staff to introduce the whole the ocean mission. So hello to all. So just now we finish uh, the DA training, so you can see we have that the a complicated training that's to test the a swimming and the landing capabilities. Not only test the vehicles, but also testing the cooperation among the different posts of the soldiers. So far, they achieved a very good performance and reached our requirements, and also hit the a testing task of the training. And going forward, we will also conduct a more complicated real battlefield mission. So we will also to test their skills. Thank you so much. And we also would like to ask, because our viewers saw the whole training, so it's a very perfect training, and they would like to see more. But actually, we have very little knowledge about our mission, the Marine Corps. Would you please talk more about our corps? Actually, if you ask about the trainings, actually, there are a lot of different subjects under our trainings. For this kind of the a literal training, actually, they conduct every summer. We talk about actually at the hottest season, we bring the whole team to this kind of environment to test the amphibious battling capabilities. And also, it's last three months for the whole training because that should cover the, a lot of subjects, and I can tell you it's very difficult and with a very high standards and requirements. So we trust the every soldier should pass the every single task, and their physical capabilities should also hit the target, and everyone should know from A to Z about all the equipment on board. And all the tasks and all the missions, all the trainings should finish in the required time frame. So all in all, we would like to prepare the whole corps that good to fight in the real war. So by so doing, we would like to improve the soldiers' skill signs, their war capabilities. And of course, we talk about today's a very special day because today marks the 93rd anniversary of PLA's foundation. So this is the Arms Day. This is our own celebration day. So first of all, happy holiday. Thank you for your hard work. And let's carry forward that the a heroic spirit. And we talk about we have the, a lot of really good titles and credit. And in we have that name of Tigers of the Land and Dragons of the Sea. And also under the a Xi Jinping Sao on the socialism with Chinese characteristics, we also created a stronger and a powerful arm force. And we'll still train and cultivate and sharpen our capabilities in order to protect our people and our country.
We believe that everyone should give our armed force personnel a thumbs up. So right now we can see this is the a landed infantry fighting vehicles. So this the a western part of China's Guangdong waters. A brigade of Chinese Marines conducts littoral combat training every summer. So this is also a very big day because today celebrate the 93rd anniversary of PLA's foundation. So back to our previous TA live stream, we talk about what one of our correspondents actually in DA repaired vehicles, but we talk about the actually the a fight hit by the waves. We talk about today actually it's really extreme weather, so that also actually damage our the a cameras and also the a sound equipment. So that is why our viewers cannot really hear our sounds and look at our the a footage and pictures. So we talk about today actually we had the rehearsals before the a previous days, but we talk about today actually this is really extreme weather condition. So actually, you can see me. I'm totally white because we actually heat totally by the that wave. And we talk about I am myself on the um, board of the a uh, repairment vehicles, and I can tell you the height of the repairment vehicle even higher than the infantry fighting vehicles. But still. Actually, you can see it's really impact our normal performance, and you can tell that our soldiers, our armed force personnel, they really conduct all different kinds of missions in a very difficult situation with a lot of uncertainties and instabilities. So we talk about in this kind of the a situation with really big tides, the waves, and the soldiers for sure, they work so hard because they need to train from day to night. And also we talk about the infantry fighting vehicles actually also need to do the trainings every day. And we also talk about actually they need a lot of experience for them to cope with a lot of uncertainties and risks over the sea. And also, of course, the a battlefield, the, the enemies doesn't care that your weather is good or not. So that requires our vehicle personnel that need to perform all different kinds of missions under whatever condition. So this is something need to be included and need to be trained in their day-to-day -day training session. I can tell you we talk about the a sickness, the a C sickness, and we also talk about that our personnel they have that heroic spirit. They really put their life on gender, but they not really that think about that. They all care about us. They, they always ask our safety. So they really actually have that enormous capability for hard work. So on this very special day, we have hope the all the armed force a happy army day. So today is the big celebration, the celebrating the 93rd anniversary of PLA's foundation.